Abe Friedtanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Carrie Kuhn and Morgan Spector about The Gilded Age. How are you both doing today? Great. Great. Never better. It's really nice to get a chance to talk to you again. I was listening to our last conversation, which I think was in early January before the show mm. started. <laughs> Uh, oh so that, it's nice to do more of a deep dive now. I think I've seen a few episodes of the show, but hearing what you said, I think was very much true for what was to come about the consequences of uh, your character's actions being felt by other people um, mm -hmm. and uh, just a lot of general sentiments like that. So I'm, I'm excited to, to hear about how you're both feeling about this show right now as we're talking for award season and season two is in production. Well, I certainly enjoyed um, watching everybody because on an ensemble show with COVID, I didn't get to see a lot of the work being done with Christine and Cynthia. So one of the pleasures of the show when you're on a big ensemble show like we're on is getting to see it because you're not part of so much of it. And I would say in, in terms of what's to come in the second season, I think uh, more of the characters, especially downstairs, are to become part of the main storyline. And I just think the world has become more dynamic and more rich. And uh, Morgan has expressed this earlier, but our COVID limitations are a little looser. So we also have, mm. believe it or not, more <laughs> spectacle. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then the costumes have really taken another step up and hair and makeup has just always been perfect. So that's not changing it because it's just, they're, they're on top of all of that. And, um, mm. and George and Bertha just continue to take over the world, but not without some hitches. For that. Right. Yeah. Well, but we still really love each other and we're still very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you Morgan's abs. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's a good place to start. Um, I think that, you know, the the upstairs downstairs <laughs> relationship. I I one of the things that you said mm -hmm. last time that you liked a lot about the characters is that they had this really strong marriage. And I think there's this moment we see with George early on where he has a chance to you know, be unfaithful. And he doesn't seem very interested. She seems much more interested, but I feel like that's a road that I would have expected the character to go down because he's used to having so much power. How do you feel about the fact that that's not what he did? Me or Carrie? Ah, uh, let's start with Morgan. Um, you. Me. Sorry, I'm looking uh, at you, which isn't helpful because, yeah. No, I feel great. I, I mean, I, I think I would have been, I would have been sort of heartbroken if George had gone, had gone that way. I feel like that's the, I mean, you can imagine like a much more like cynical version of this show where everybody's like extremely dark and these people are like kind of just unredeemably vile uh, people, but I don't know. And maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's some like biting truth to that version of the show, but I, I don't think it's as fun to watch. And I think, you know, the fact that you can, you can kind of, believe in these people as a couple, even as you are, you know, maybe repelled by some of the things they do uh, to sort of achieve their ambitions. I think that's, you know, I think that, 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 that gives a, that gives characters legs, that gives the show legs, it gives them depth and complexity. I think it's important. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I, I, I also think it sets George apart from the men of his era, because I don't think it was even that it wasn't, it, it wouldn't have been that surprising at all. It would have been kind of expected for a man like George to be, you know, mm -hmm taking advantage of opportunities like that. So I think it's, I think it kind of makes them interesting. Yeah, and I think there's also such an interesting uh, range to the scandals that we see on this show that some of them are the kinds of things that are era that's just like, that's not even anything. It's just, right. but there's this whole, and this, it was the same way with Downton Abbey too. Like, this whole big scandal of something that is completely normal and completely fine, but just, it's a, a very different, uh, different time period. Can I, can I say one thing about yeah. that? You know, one thing people say about our show uh, is that it has, there are moments where there are no stakes. And I, I get that. I totally do because it's like, oh, who cares whether you come to their party or not? But like, I think a lot of it has to do with this like very fragile world of female power in which the stakes for those individual women in this world at this time are actually quite high. Um, and because there is no, there's no other sphere for them for one thing, but also the costs of reputation are extremely high. Like if you blow it, mm -hmm. if you are cast out of this social world, you are, you are social, you're socially isolated. Uh, you potentially could lose, you know, a partner. You could have real material consequences on your life. Um, I don't think that, uh, you know, I actually, I don't think those stakes are low. I think it's just, 
you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit too, too easy to sort of say, oh, these, you know, these rich ladies, they don't have problems because, but they, they do, especially in this time. I think it is different. It's distinct from our own era in that way. I know, yeah. Carrie, do you agree with that? Sort of. Yeah. And I would say that's also what makes the marriage unique in that time, because so many of the marriages that were made were out of convenience and because of economic stability, women needed a man in order to gain any kind of economic stability, which is the thing Bertha is looking for with Gladys to make sure Gladys is cared for and that she's going to level up and to make sure, you know, her son doesn't end up with some fortune hunter. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a, uh, it makes George and, and Bertha stand out even more because they have a, a love match. And because it's so egalitarian, which uh, frankly is unique in any TV show, I find even contemporary ones, um, you know, so often the wife part is deeply uninteresting and she's supporting this like hapless guy who's just banging around in the world and she ultimately forgives him. It's getting really dull and really old, frankly. And I've been offered a lot of those parts and they're just not very fun to play because they don't really resemble marriages that I know, uh, including Morgan's and mine in real life. So it's, it's, um, it makes the marriage stand out in, in the storytelling um, in this world that we're playing in as well. So it's important. It's also interesting to see the parenting style, which uh, maybe is a little <laughs> bit different for each of them, but also they're I think, on the same page when it comes to, I think there's the opportunity where the, the father could say something that really you know, doesn't support what the mother wants, but in, you know, George really defers, I think, a lot to Bertha and mm -hmm. they both, I think, get a lot of resentment for what they do with Gladys. Mm. Yeah, too bad she's so dull. <laughs> I, I joke, this but really, a... you know, Bertha, Bertha really wants a daughter who's as ambitious as she is, and that's not what she has, and that makes her really single-minded about it. And so there is a little bit of good cop, bad cop going on. But mm -hmm. you know, nevertheless, we we often see that George and Bertha are they they um, keep those conflicts behind closed doors. They really present a united front to their children. The little, you know, tete-a-tete -tete at the table every now and then. But, right. you know, usually when he knows Bertha's probably going to give in on something. And so I, I don't know. I think that's, that's a united front parenting is something that we try to do. You know, it's really, it's really an important example to set for your kids. But, um, but yeah. ultimately Bertha is, she's doing it out of love. She's looking out for Gladys's best interest. She's just maybe not going about it the way that's necessarily best for Gladys, you know? And I think George has a kind of bottom line uh, approach to the whole thing. Like he, I think the thing that he, he will put his foot down about is who she marries, but up to and including that point, uh, you know, he'll defer most of the time. But you're really strict about what you want your son to do. You're very upset he wanted to be an architect. I know. It's just, uh, it's kind of a frivolous profession, isn't it? It's like uh, he's, everybody has that fantasy of living in the Parisian garret and being an architect, it's useful in discretion. Well, going back to uh, Bertha's ambition, I think one of the most memorable scenes of this season was that episode ending one where, you know, Bertha has to be sort of smuggled out the rear entrance and just <laughs> face full of, of, of embarrassment. What was it like filming that scene and how did you feel about that in the arc of the character? Well, it's a great, I thought it was a great, you know, humiliating moment. Your, your, your ambitious character, who's ultimately winning always has to be humiliated. It's part of the hero's journey. So it was a great way to accomplish that. We shot that scene, I think in, I can't remember if it was two or three different houses. So we actually, so like it was, you know, the front parlor of one mansion, the stairwell of another mansion and the backyard of a different one. So it was actually broken up quite a bit. And I was also uh, eight and a half months, eight months pregnant, seven and a half months pregnant when we shot it. So there's also a body double that's working in that scene who kind of, you know, first in the wide shots, you see there's a body double or like coming down the stairs sometimes. So it was really weird for me to not actually shoot, shoot it in continuity because, you know, I had to be covered with a, a body double, but, but it's just a great bit. It's just a great bit to, you know, run up some stairs and spit out some feathers and, and glower. It's very theatrical. And, and, and that's part of those things are the, those are the moments that make the show really fun to do, you know, for every dinner party, which has its own set of challenges. There's, you know, kind of some physical comedy and something fun. And that's what, that's what makes the show, I think, um, it, it's what makes you understand that Julian's really good at what he's doing because there's a balance between those things. And he knows his audience. And just when you've had one dinner party too many, <laughs> something like that happens and sort of shakes up the, you know, the energy of the show. And I think he's just really good at that. It's also uh, like really competitive people need that kind of thing for fuel for their fire. Mm. You know, it's like uh, yeah. Warriors won the NBA championship last week. 
And uh, Clay Thompson got up and read out like a, a tweet from two years from like the previous season that somebody had said, you know, made like critiquing him. And he was just like, it's all in here. Like, and, and you're like, I don't know. That's clearly, <laughs> you know, Bertha having to walk out the back door. Yeah. You're just like, oh, she's going to get hers for this. Like there's going to yeah. be someone will pay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Morgan, you mentioned before about how, you know, some people feel that there aren't stakes. Now that people have seen the show, what other fan reactions have surprised you about the show? Oh, I mean... <laughs> I mean, just like the, 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 you know, there were a couple of articles written about how hot the relationship between Bertha and George is. <laughs> and I, I did not see that coming. I was very, I mean, I was thrilled. I was really happy about it. I, I agree. Like, I think their relationship is amazing actually, but uh, yeah, I, I was just like, I was like, this is the hottest couple on television. I was like, all right, great. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. We're yeah, fully I, clothed. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like there's no, I mean, we're, you know, we're living in an era where like, you know, the streamers don't really have uh, any kind of ratings restrictions. I mean, you can do whatever you want in television and we barely, you know, I, mean, you, you, I think you see us necking once or something. Um, anyway, I just, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it, I, it was interesting and it, it sort of spurred all this introspection between the two of us being like, what, it, what is that? What is it that people are connecting to so much um, in this particular way? And yeah, I do think it, I mean, as you say, it like it boils down to it boils down to respect. It boils down to mm-hmm. the you know, the um, the way these two people give each other space to pursue their their sort of various objectives. It's interesting. Yeah, I think ultimately people are looking for respect, and it's apparently very hard to find. I thank God every day that I'm married already. <laughs> you don't feel like hitting Tinder or whatever the, the kids are oh, doing. Oh God! Oh God! I'd rather live alone for the rest yeah. of my life. Yeah. Well, I will not have a second up. husband. Don't get two. They, they're, it's, it's too annoying. When I spoke to um, Sally and Michael a few months ago, we talked about the fact that the show still airs one episode a week, which is pretty rare uh, for TV oh, yeah. these days. Um, is this, for some people who haven't gotten into the show yet and are looking to prepare ahead of season two, do you think it's the kind of thing they should sort of space out or is it something that you should just jump into and binge? Well, if you waited, you might as well binge it. Yeah. No, that's yeah, what I, if you yeah. waited, it's going to be really annoying next season when it's coming out once a week, but you'll live. Yeah. It's good to have a little anticipation. We've lost that in the world. Have you noticed how, how everyone's not finding out the gender of their babies anymore? It's because we don't, we don't have anything to look forward to anymore. We know the answers to all the questions. You know who's calling you on the phone. There's no more like mystery. So yeah. it's one of the last mysteries, having a show play on one day a week. I, I also just... I mean, you know, maybe this is a testament to like the mighty HBO marketing machine, uh, but also there was just like, as each episode dropped last year, there was a certain amount of sort of collective digestion of what was going on. And there'd be, you know, there'd be a piece in some outlet and there'd be discourse about it. And, you know, like that doesn't happen when you just drop something, you know, when you just mm-hmm. drop the whole season, A, people are just watching it at their own pace. So, you know, nobody's necessarily where you are. You can't really talk about it because you don't want to spoil it. Um so I, I don't know. I do think that there's a real there's a real um, there's a real utility to this sort of one thing at a time uh, collective. Yeah. Model. Yeah. Walter Cronkite. We are Walter Cronkite. Indeed. Well, <laughs> if only. Well, keeping a little bit of mystery. What do you think is one thing that will that will excite fans a lot about season two? Mm. Costumes. The costumes mm. are bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the, bigger, the whole better, scale of the show expensive. is bigger. Yeah, yeah it is, as you said, it's much, it's like even more spectacle. Like the, we are, it, it is, uh, you know, get more, more gilded or more, uh, yeah. Gilded or, and I also say, I also would say one of the things that I found really thrilling about the show was the examination of that upper class neighborhood in Brooklyn, the black neighborhood. And I love that. I think, I think we're going to get to see more of that in season two. And hopefully if we were to get a season three, I think the more of that, the better, because we haven't seen it done in this period before. And it's a really fascinating and um, important and sort of under-examined world. And I'm really proud that the show is, is um, telling that story. And I, I, just, I just say more of that, please. Danae Benton is a marvel. Yeah. What an extraordinary actor she is. And everyone who's working with her, I mean, we have Audra and, 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 and John Douglas Thompson. And um, it's just, just, it's an extraordinary um, bunch of actors to not use. And so I think it's 
fun to see them leaning into that, as well as the downstairs stories. We've got some of those characters that were, weren't really um, explored as much as I said earlier. And, and that's just fun. It just makes the world bigger and, and more rich. Yeah. And I would say that the, you know, there, there, are, there are a lot, there's a lot of really high stakes history in this era. Uh, mm-hmm. And the show is really inviting a lot more of that in, I think, this season. Um, and the contrast between that and the sort of, you know, the, the cloistered world of these drawing rooms is actually, I think, really fascinating. I think that's a, it's a really, it, it makes the show mm-hmm. a little bit more jagged and a little bit more exciting in that way. So I think, I think that's cool. Wonderful. Well, that sounds great. I thank you both for taking the time to speak with me uh, again and look forward to doing it sometime soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll do it again.